welcome to the weekly update. It is now March, and March means one thing in the fish business. This is our number one month, followed by April, uh, for tank buying season, new tank setups. This is, this is the time of year where you get your best deals on the best setups. And we have tons and tons of really beautiful aquariums, complete setups, and people to help you get them set up here at Fishy Business. Uh, a couple things I wanna mention really quick and it does pertain to the weekly update. So uh, the first one is uh, in the saltwater department, there are lots and lots of fish that every single week we have an opportunity to purchase. Uh, they come and go fairly quick as they're very limited, um, but they're rarities and we never really say very much about them and if we don't stock them, you never get a chance to see them. So with this video, uh, Reagan and Hayden will be kind of introducing you to some opportunities that we have to get some of these rare fish. Uh, they're gonna kind of go over week to week what kind of availability that possibly we may have and you can call to check if you want to inquire about getting them. They're fish we wouldn't typically stock simply because of their price range, but they're fish that we have an opportunity to get. Uh, so you definitely wanna pay attention to that in the upcoming video. Also, uh, pond season is nigh upon us, so you will start to see really cool koi, and it's always at the beginning of the season that the most variety is what we have the option of getting. So definitely start paying attention to that, ask any questions you have about ponds, and uh, let's get on to the video. What's up everybody? Welcome to the weekly update this week. It is beautiful again outside. Um, hopefully it doesn't get cold again. So that's why we are outside doing the intro for the saltwater fish. Um, it's beautiful. This is definitely my type of weather. Um, I still have a sweatshirt on because I'm cold all the time. So I'm ready for the warm weather. Um, before I show you my fish that I got in this week, I am going to talk about a new project, um, something new that we're gonna try to be doing here at Fishy Business. Um, and that's gonna be next. It has to deal with big, cool, rare, exotic saltwater fish. So we're gonna be trying that out for all of you guys, but um, so that's gonna be next. Then right after is when I'm gonna point out the new, cool, super fun fish that I got in for you guys this week. Whoop, whoop. Hi guys, so Chuck uh, mentioned that I was gonna talk to you guys a little bit more about this big fish thing that we are gonna start here in the store, hopefully. Um, one of our vendors is fantastic and they carry the widest range of assortment of fish. Um, so a lot of times they have available, really expensive, fancy, rare fish. Um, that being said, it's something that we want to start offering to you guys, those of you that would like to carry some of these more exotic, more rare saltwater fish. That being said, each weekly update, we are gonna be talking about four or five that are currently available to us. The way it'll work is that if you see one of the fish that I'm gonna talk about in the video, if you see it, that you like it and you wanna order it, call the store, ask for me or Hayden. We are gonna be the two people that are gonna be leading up this project, if you will, with the fish. So call the store, ask for me, which my name is Reagan, or Hayden. Um, and the way it'll work, because these fish are gonna be a little bit pricier, is that they will be paid for up front. Um, any of the other details we can discuss later if you wanna call and talk to us a little bit more about that. But the five fish that I'm gonna to touch on and showcase that we can order in for next week um, are going to include the Achilles tang. I'm able to get Achilles tangs. Um, the size that I'm able to get right now are gonna be mediums. I don't have an exact inch measurement, but this vendor is very trustworthy with their sizes, so it will be a true medium Achilles tang. The next fish that I'm gonna be able to order for you next week will be gem tangs. They do have a, a plethora of gem tangs. Definitely not something that we would carry just to have in the store, but they are available to me. Also size mediums. Um, this is one of Chuck's favorite that we looked at. It is called the Japanese White Bar Big Eye Soldier Fish. It is super impressive. It is a very impressive fish. Definitely something worth considering to have in your tank. And that one's gonna be a size large. The next one is going to be a golden hawk fish. 
So hawkfish in general don't get very big, but for the golden hawkfish, the size that I can order you is going to be an extra large. So the biggest possible golden hawkfish I'm gonna be able to get for you. And last but not least, they do have bananas slash golden eels. Those are the really light yellow colored ones that are absolutely beautiful, definitely a rare eel. And those are gonna be mediums as well that I can get for you. So out of those five fish, those are the ones that we have to choose from. But that being said, they have so many more rare, exotic, cool fish. Um, an example, just last week we had a customer come in and want us to order them a Borbonius or a Blotched Antheus, which is definitely not something that we would just carry in the store due to the price point. But they paid for it up front, we ordered it, and it is coming in this week. So if you want anything else, please call the store as well, and we can double check and see if we have that availability for you. So. I know that was a lot of information, but if you have any other questions, call the store, ask for Reagan, which is me, or Hayden, and we'll be glad to talk to you more about this process and this new thing that we're starting. So, now, let's go look at my fish. So this is my cute little chocolate chip cookie puffa. Um, it's a regular black freckled or black spot dog face, but his spots are much bigger than your normal ones. Chase called him a Dalmatian dog face, um, which is also cute. He is trying to eat the snails. Um, might have to remove those from the tank. Uh, that being said, pufferfish, they eat crabs, snails, and shrimp. So that is a part of their diet. So if you have any snails, crabs, or shrimp in the tank, that is definitely something that they will go after. Um, but this guy is just the cutest little cookie and I love him so much and I've already taken a bajillion pictures and videos. Dog faces just like this little chocolate chip cookie. He will get about a foot in length. He will get 12 inches. Um, big tanks for him, at least a 125 if not a 180 or a 210. But you don't really see <laughs> dog face puffers um, with those really thick black dots like a Dalmatian. So this is definitely a rarity dog face and there will not be another one that looks like him. All right, so I did get in some more of the Brazilian long snout seahorses, the orange and the yellows, which they are the Hippocampus reedes. That is their Latin name, their scientific name. These guys are tank bred and raised, and they are all eating frozen food. Um, the frozen food they are eating is going to be the Hikari Mysis shrimp. So if you want to come in and pick up some of the seahorses, then definitely pick up some of the food uh, for them as well. Um, there is a video out on seahorses that I did. It was released last Monday, so definitely go to our YouTube and check that out so you can get all of the useful information about these guys. But I do have them, and by the time you watch this video, they will be for sale. So definitely come on in and check out these beautiful hippocampus seahorses. All right, guys, so this is the magnificent fox face, also known as the redfin fox face. So these guys are venomous, just like your regular fox faces, but they do look a little bit different. So they do have those red and yellow fins, as well as that black and white markings on their bodies. And on their face, they have a yellow line that runs right down the front in the middle. That's hard to see if he's not looking right at you. Magnificent fox faces are one that, just like the regular fox face, are reef safe with caution. They typically don't go after corals, but sometimes they do. You have about a 50-50 chance of it eating your corals or not. That being said, usually fish only tanks for this guy, but as a magnificent fox face, he is absolutely beautiful and definitely not your normal colored fox face. The other fish in the tank that I'd like to point out is one of my absolute favorite wrasses. This is your male green bird wrasse that beautiful electric lime green on the gills and on the fins and that nice emerald green running through his whole body. Now, green bird wrasses are a large bodied wrasse, so they will eat your inverts, crabs, snails, and shrimp. Definitely more of a fish only system for him. He will not mess with your coral. So if you have a reef tank and don't mind a couple of the cleanup crew members going missing, you could even add him in that tank as well. Definitely a wrasse that doesn't play nice with other wrasses, so should be the lone wrasse in the tank. 
but they have so much personality, they are so beautiful, and they add so much activity and color to your tank. All right, guys, up next I have a small copper band butterfly. So this is a butterfly. Butterflies in general are not a very hardy fish. They are definitely more um, delicate. That being said, if you want to call a butterfly hardy, this would be your quote unquote hardy butterfly. So this copper band, since it is a small, has been doing very well adapting to tank life. Something cool about the copper band butterflies is that they are really good at eating aptasia or the glass anemone, which is a pest in your tank and you don't want those. So if you're starting to see some glass anemones or that aptasia pop up in your tank and you would like to add a fish, the copper band butterfly would be an excellent addition to your tank. Now I will say, because it's a butterfly, once it does eat your aptasia, there is a chance it will start eating your coral. So just be careful and keep an eye on that if you want to try him in a reef tank. Butterflies in general do better in a fish only because they do have that diet for some of your corals. All right, guys, so this is the first time I've been able to get one of these, and this is a true fuzzy dwarf lionfish. This guy is a dwarf. He only gets about six or seven inches in total size, so not very big. His eyes are absolutely stunning. It looks like they have a complete own, like, universe in their eyes. Their fins, their pectoral fins are beautiful, and sometimes he'll span those out and you'll get to see them, and it is absolutely stunning. Fuzzy dwarfs typically will find a spot on the rock just like this guy and perch and just kind of hang out and stay there. That's totally normal. It means they're happy and they feel very comfortable in your tank. Now this guy is reef safe with caution because he will eat small fish, anything that will fit in his mouth like most lions, as well as some of your inverts. Those guys might go missing as well. But overall, this is an absolutely beautiful fish. Ghost shrimp is going to be something that is a really good part of their diet. Um, they can be transferred over to frozen food, but it will take a little bit of time for them to do so. Um, but all in all, a beautiful fish, and it doesn't even need that big of a tank. All right, guys, so the last couple things I'm gonna point out are in this really nice big community tank together. The big silver fish with the yellow fins, those are gonna be your monodactylus. These guys are beautiful. They do very well in schools. They are reef safe. They look beautiful when they zoom front um, in the front of your tank. Those guys are fantastic at a lot of activity. These beautiful black and silver stripes are your Bangai Cardinals, a super peaceful reef fish that can even go in tanks like your 32 gallon BioCube. They are phenomenal and they are very hardy as well. These guys right here with the elongated bodies that are all congregating around my hands because they would love some food right now are going to be your barred zebra gobies. They have the orange bars running down their body, the turquoise eye, and the beautiful purple on their gill plate. A super peaceful, fun, schooling reef fish that do very well in schools, zipping in and out of the rocks in your reef. The other fish I have in here are going to be another type of cardinal. They're your pajama cardinals. Just like the Bengai, super peaceful, super reef safe, and can also go in tanks like the 32 gallon BioCube. Another very great community fish. Last but not least, I'm gonna point out the beautiful Diamond Goby. So this is a Diamond Watchman Goby. These guys are excellent sand sifters. So if you're looking for something to stir up your stand to keep it clean and keep that gross film off the top of it, a diamond goby is a very peaceful and very good community fish. Just make sure that you do have a glass lid or some type of covering on your tank if you would like to do the diamond goby. Hey, it's Kevin. I'm here to show you what I think are the best looking things that we have to offer this week in the way of fresh water. Come take a look. Best pick this week on live bears are definitely the fancy guppies. Most of these guys came from a local breeder that I've got. They look stellar, especially the males that are metallic blue. Very good for color. One of my favorite Mabuna species of African cichlid, the electric blue Johannes. They came in nice size and great color. 
I promised one of my customers whenever I got some smaller Oscars in that I would put it on the video. Here they are for you. We got in some assorted small Oscars. Well, they're like a medium small. They're not tiny, tiny. But compared to what they will grow to, yes, they are small. I got some albinos and some regular red tigers and some reds possibly in there. But bear in mind with Oscars, they get huge. You will need a minimum tank size of 55 Preferably a 75 or bigger because of the width does make a big difference on the way these fish grow. I got in one of my personal favorite freshwater fish. These are the Roseline Sharks, also known as a Denuncii Barb. Very cool for planted tanks and usually mix well with smaller fish with no problem. Probably one of my favorite oddballs of all time. This is a black ghost knife. This fella can get over 20 inches in a big enough tank. Does really well in most community situations with larger community fish. As he gets bigger though, he would be, well, you want to make sure that you don't have him with anything too little, but also nothing that's going to nip at him too much. He is blind as a bat and finds his food and locomotes through the tank using electronic impulses so you cannot keep two together because they will fight. Got in these nice little imported placos. These are the Red Thresher placos. Really cool red tail placo. Pretty laid back, does really well with most community fish with no problem. I got in some really nice looking tangerine lobsters. This guy in particular has got stellar color on him. These guys are omnivorous. They like to eat plant and animal matter. So they don't do very well in a planted tank and they don't do very well with slow moving fish. One of my all time favorite freshwater fish has got to be the tiger barb. I like them because of the way they school so avidly. They clump swarm like bees. To get that schooling effect, you're always going to do best if you have five or more, but actually preferably around ten for best results. We got in some electric blue jack dipsies. These are probably one of our most popular cichlids that we carry because they generally do very well with more docile species. Awesome for color. They get up to about six inches max. We got in some cute little butterfly koi. Now, pond season is right around the corner, actually. A lot of my clients like to put out fish real early when they get spring fever. Make sure that you are cautious in doing so because these guys, although they will live under ice, they gotta gradually get used to the colder temperatures and right now the temperature is swinging quite a bit. So if you've got a smaller pond, you might do better if you wait till the end of March to add your pond fish as opposed to right now. Larger ponds, the temperature doesn't fluctuate quite so much, but do bear in mind, you're acclimating a fish from an indoor temperature to an outdoor temperature very quickly in either case. We got in some really cool black bar silver dollars. They're really big. I managed to luck out and get these on a trade end actually. This is not a fish that you commonly see in the store. And when we do have them, they're not of this size. I've only got three. They're really nice and really big and really pretty. One of my favorite dwarf cichlids you can get has got to be the Crabensis. The females outshine the males in the color department. Look at the dark purple on her stomach. She is a stellar specimen and she's hiding. There she is. Really beautiful little fish. But generally in most cichlids, the male is more colorful than the female. Not so on the Crabensis. The Crabensis do really well in a semi-aggressive tank and with barbs and the such. Usually don't exceed more than three to four inches. We got in a good selection of assorted Neocaridina shrimp. We've got in some red, we got some blue, we got some little snowballs, and we got some other colors mixed in there too. Got a good selection on these little guys. They're becoming really, really popular in the hobby. Very fussy over their water quality and don't do well with large fish. Just to show you what a tilapia bought a car fry will turn into when you buy them under this big, 
This is what they turn into, a highly aggressive fish that tries to eat your hand. You can hear her teeth scraping the glass. I love this fish though, I like psychotic fish though. <laughs> but really cool conversation piece would make a great pet for you if you're willing to dedicate a whole tank to just one fish because it will destroy anything else you put in there with it. Hey everyone, uh, before we go real quick, uh, Monday, we will have a video on cleaning filter socks. Uh, that's with Trevor. Uh, he always makes it makes simple things or difficult things fun when you watch him on video. And he will be doing that on Monday. So you will kind of see how we take care of our filter socks here, the process by which we clean them, and that might help you. There are lots of different ways to do that, but you will see the fishy business way. Uh, we will also have, for the first time in about a month and a half, a new grind video posting uh, next week, I think. Is that right, Kat? Okay, yes, we will have a grind video. So if you've been jonesing to see the behind the scenes and stuff that happens when we make mistakes and things like that, we will have a new grind video. And following that the next week, we will actually have, we will start the question and answers. Uh, you will actually see interviews with different people here and how they maintain aquariums. And basically it's gonna be a self-help guide that we're gonna put in such a way that hopefully it self-helps you. So uh, watch and, uh, God bless. We'll see you back here next week.